Democrats are, of course, very focused right now on taking back power, and some even go so far as to say our democracy depends on it. I'm joined now by Paul Glasters, the editor-in-chief of The Washington Monthly, and he is here to talk about his article, Winning is Not Enough. Paul, great to see you. Great to see Thanks you Thanks for again. being with me. Um, so the article essentially says, We've had all of these swing elections, right? Wave elections where one side takes everything and the other side takes it back. And it's led to essentially nothing really moving the country forward. So your argument in essence is if Democrats win the House, that's not enough. They've got to figure out how to keep power. Dig into that a little bit for us. Well, that's absolutely right. Since 1981, Democrats have controlled the White House and both houses of Congress how many years? Turns out four. The first two years of the Clinton administration, the first two years of the Obama administration. During those two years, they jammed through as many policies as they thought they could get. They then lost Congress, and you had not gridlock completely, but uh, uh, divided government, as they used to say. Now, divided government didn't used to necessarily be a bad thing. It didn't have to lead to bad government. A lot of good things happened uh, during those periods. We now, however, have a are in a different period, in my opinion. I think we no longer have a Republican Party, frankly, that is a small d Democratic Party. I'm afraid the Republican Party, in its support of the anti-democratic policies and tendencies of the Trump administration, uh, has moved in more into a different direction, a very unfortunate direction. So my argument is Democrats cannot afford to build a politics in which they win power only to lose it two years, two years later. Mm. They have to think for the good of democracy, not just of their own party, how to build long-term power. This is one of the things that, that I've frankly been thinking about, both in terms of, okay, what is the, the program and the, the agenda that Democrats get behind, but also there's such cynicism in politics that whatever party's in power, they're just going to try to change the rules to benefit them. Right, they'll rail against the filibuster when they're, you know, when they're out of yes. power, and then they'll they'll change the rules when they they have it. And so, what can Democrats do to help rebuild some of the foundations of democracy that I think a lot of folks would say are being strained right now? Well, in some sense, the times are as bad as they are for Democrats. There's an underlying good thing, and that is, while the Republicans advantage themselves by restricting the vote. Right, Republicans, you know, the those who get res, who get whose vote gets restricted tend to be Democrats. Mm -hmm. Democrats are advantaged by expanding the vote, by expanding democracy. So there is an overlap between what is good for democracy, at least in this period, and what is good for the Democratic Party. So um, a relentless and uh, somewhat ruthless effort by the Democrats to expand the number of citizens who can vote and do vote is not only good for the country if you believe voting is a right that ought to be exercised, but it's very good for the Democratic Party. And you lay on some specific ideas in that regard. I, I do. Um, I believe that Democrats should lay the groundwork for having the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico become states in 2021 should Democrats take the House, the Senate, and, and, and the White House. Um, 37 times since the founding of the country, we've added states to the Union. Uh, we've last time did it in 1959 when we added Hawaii and Alaska. Um, there is very good reason why we should do this. Um, the disastrous response by the federal government to the hurricane in Puerto Rico is really example number one. If Puerto Rico were a state and had two senators, I can guarantee you, uh, the federal government would not have been able to get away with the slow walking of the response, and thousands of people might not have died. Mm. So that's one example. Another example is universal vote by mail. We've written a lot about this in the magazine. Um, uh, if everyone, instead of having to wait in line at a polling place, got their ballot in the mail two or three weeks before the campaign, they could fill it out at their leisure and either mail it back or drop it off at a secure site. Um, it would boost turnout by three to 10% according to ex experiments done in states that have it. Um, it wouldn't necessarily just benefit Democrats, many Republicans would benefit, but on balance I think more Democrats would vote than Republicans. It's another way to 
balance the scales between the advantages Republicans now have because of our Constitution. Republicans represent small states. Small states have inordinate power. Uh, they also represent rural areas. Rural areas have inordinate power. Mm -hmm. um, this is a way for Democrats to sort of even the scales. Um, do you anticipate that there is any chance Republicans could go along with any either vote by mail or adding um, D.C. and Puerto Rico uh, to you know the Senate count essentially? Because part of what we've seen in the energy behind immigration policy is really uh, it, it really is a cynical political ploy. Republican leaders feel that immigrants are more likely to vote for vote for the Democratic Party. Ann Coulter has said this flat out. The mm -hmm. California is lost mm -hmm. because we've had so much immigration there. And so the, the idea is to, sh to shut down immigration as much as possible to make sure people don't become citizens so that they can't vote. So given that as the backdrop and the aggressive measures taken there, um, not to mention directly on attacks on voting, do you think there's any chance that there are any Republicans who would go along with these ideas? On the adding of the states, no, not really. On the expanding vote by mail? Yes, I do. Um, Utah, as recently as 2016, let each of its counties decide to go whether to do universal vote by mail or the old polling place method. 21 of the 26 counties chose to do universal vote by mail. Those that did saw a 5 to 10 percent increase in their voting. Um, most, nearly all of those counties were run by Republicans. And there's a real interest among Republican county officials uh, to lower the costs of voting. A lot of people are already voting by mail. They've already got two different systems they're paying for. So I think, there, I think that there is some support, or could be some support among Republicans for vote by mail. But let me say on the immigrants thing, you know, H Hispanics didn't used to vote so overwhelmingly for Democrats. George W. Bush did a fabulous job of winning a substantial share of the Hispanic vote. Asians used to be predominantly Republican voters. Mm -hmm. Now they're overwhelmingly Democratic voters. Um, I know that you're right that that's how a lot of Republicans look at immigrants, but that's because they're not contesting those voters. Right. I think Democrats should do a better job of contesting and trying to win over white working class voters, and I'd like to see the Republicans do the same well, on speak immigrants. Speak to that white working class piece. I mean, I, you know, I am a Democrat, and there's this whole debate, oh, is it worth trying to appeal to these voters? To me, the question isn't you know, a, a political question. It's a question of, do I belong to a party that wants to fight for every community Absolutely. or not? Absolutely. Absolutely. But what, it, what is an agenda that you think could appeal to some of the voters who were voting for Barack Obama just four years ago and then turned around and voted for Donald Trump? I think that's a great question. And you make the right point. Republicans now have commanding support from white working class voters, especially in rural areas, exurban areas. But Democrats only need to win back up the portion that they used to get when Barack Obama was president to have dramatic effects on, on elections. And I think the Democrats have to contest them. I think they have to run, partly for the reasons you say, how can you be a party that doesn't represent all Americans? And 45% of the electorate is white working class, uh, as defined as you know, not having a college degree. Um, and so there are a lot of things that Democrats do stand for or could stand for or should stand for that ought to appeal to the white working class. Um, chief among them, um, and you're beginning to see Democrats talk about this, what has really driven down wages in this country? What has really driven down the level of entrepreneurship? What has driven uh, the decline of, of uh, innovation in our economy is the, is the growing monopolization of every sector of our economy. Um, you know, it, from, from social networks to, to beer, um, uh, to hospitals, right. you're seeing consolidation of industries at levels we haven't seen since the 19, really 20s, yeah. uh, even earlier. And breaking up concentrated power, providing more competition for more in more industries, allowing people to be able to have multiple employers in their industries so maybe they could go from one to the other to get a wage increase. You know, we're nine years into an economic expansion and we've had virtually no wage increases. Remarkable. Right? Yeah. And, that, and people see this, by the way, 
it's not some high-minded esoteric thing. They see it in their town where there's now a monoculture. Essentially, they can go work at the Walmart or the Wendy's and that's all they've that's got. Right. got. That's right. That's right. And 30 years ago, there were 10, 15 employers. Absolutely. You know, you were, if you're fixing tractors in a small town, it used to be there were two or three different three or four different manufacturers of tractors and two or three dealers for each of those within a 50 mile radius of where you lived. Now there's one manufacturer, maybe, maybe two, right. and one dealer owns all the dealerships. If you go crosswise with that guy, you don't Forget work. Forget it. Forget and about it. And good luck getting, getting a raise. So well, I think that is absolutely crucial to, to the Democrats winning back that vote. Agree wholeheartedly. I encourage everybody to read the article, the whole thing. It's in Washington Monthly, cover story. Um, Paul, thank you. Great to have you. Thank appreciate you it. for having me. I really appreciate it. And we'll be back with more Rising after this.